From the moment of birth, children are exposed to marketing. We live in a consumer society where companies compete to sell their products. Children are exposed to the advertising and promotion of these products on a daily basis. Marketing has an enormous influence on what we all buy and what we consume. When that marketing effort is put behind unhealthy products like processed food, like tobacco, like alcohol, it also has enormous influence on our health and welfare, and even how long we live. The more marketing I see, the more likely I am to start smoking, drink alcohol, and eat foods that will lead to health problems when I get older. Our research at the Institute for Social Marketing has shown that children are regularly exposed to the marketing of cigarettes, alcohol and foods that are high in salt, sugar and fat. We know that the type, the volume and the frequency of that marketing directly affects whether a child starts smoking, starts drinking at an early age and how much, or eats the foods that are directly linked to obesity. I see things on TV, like breakfast cereals and sweets, that I'd like to eat. Now I also see these ads on my phone too. Just over ten years ago, we did what was the world's first ever systematic review, a very careful scientific review of all the evidence on the marketing of food and processed food and its impact on children and childhood obesity. And what emerged from that is that there is a clear link between such marketing and childhood obesity. And indeed, as a result of the study, the World Health Organization issued the first ever guidelines constraining the marketing of fast food, particularly to children. Since 1999, we've been looking at how young people uh, respond to tobacco promotion. Our research showed that regular exposure to those types of displays affected whether a child was more likely to start smoking. And more recently what we've been doing is looking at tobacco packaging. And we know that attractive and colourful packaging does a number of things. It increases the appeal of smoking, it takes away from the impact of the health warnings on the pack, and it also confuses people about the cigarettes that are inside the pack. And at the moment, that research is helping the UK government to decide whether it's going to introduce plain packaging of tobacco products. I heard that some drinks have flavours like apple and cherry. I tried some beer and I didn't like the taste, but if it's apple, it might be okay to me. We did some of the very early work on the impact of alcohol marketing on young people. And what emerged from that is that they were very interested in the sorts of evocative messages that marketers develop. They knew them, they understood them, they liked them, and it influenced what they did. And we now know from very well conducted studies that alcohol marketing encourages children to start drinking earlier and once they start drinking, to drink more. Still, even today, over 200,000 young people start smoking in the UK every year. We know that young people in Britain are more likely to start drinking younger and at higher levels than in many European countries. And the World Health Organization has identified childhood obesity as one of the biggest challenges of the 21st century. Marketing affects all of these things. Too much of everything is having a bad impact on our planet. So we need to start a debate about the impact of marketing in this much broader sense and the extent to which it is implicated in unsustainable behaviours, climate change and the rest. These are vital topics that we need to engage in. If governments are going to take action on these types of issues, then they really need good quality scientific evidence to introduce policies that will result in change. That's the type of research that we do, and we've got a duty to continue to do that research, both for today and tomorrow's children. <laughs>